April 3rd. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and I have a great Martingale trunk show. And then I have some fun stuff to show you that you can use to uh, fill your time during this quarantine. So first, this is a brand new book called 2468. It's by Martingale and it's Motor Designers and it was compiled by Lisa Alexander. And I'm gonna show you all the quilts in the book. And if you wanna buy the book at 20% off, the coupon code is 246 and that would be spelled out. So T-W-O-F-O-U-R-S-I-X, 20% off through Sunday. So grab your book and I'm gonna show you all the quilts in it. So the very first quilt in the book is by Layla Boutique and it is called First Down and it, um, it has a very Christmassy feel but I think the arrows are supposed to represent something like maybe a sport. I don't know, I'm not very sporty. But very cute and I love um, the size of it. It's a great lap quilt that would be good in your living room. So that's the first quilt in the book. The second one is um, you put it under your sewing machine and it's a little catch-all. So you could put your scissors or anything like that that you're always losing. And this is by me and my sister designs. Let's see, and then this is the back of the next one. This is a table runner. And this is by Sherry McConnell of Sherry and Chelsea, and it's called Game on Table Runner. And again, this one could also be holiday themed. So you can see with this book, it has definitely got a sports name, but the quilts are all universal. The next quilt is by Lisa Bonjean and it is absolutely gorgeous. She's using some of her flannels in this and this is called Golden Rule. And I'm gonna show you the back and you can see the beautiful quilting on it. There's a lot of, um, you can tell it's custom quilted. And I'm also gonna show you some of the applique up close. It has um, buttonhole stitch or, yeah, I think it's not buttonhole, blanket stitch. I always call it that. Really pretty. The next one, oops, I have it right side up. Yay. This is by Sandy Gervais and this is called Rookie Vibe. And it's a great, this would be a great quilt since it's so easy for a baby shower gift because it's not that much work. And if you don't want to do the little bird, you wouldn't have to. Super cute, uh, uses a lot of empty space. So um, her quilting, she did some light blue cloud. So it looks like the clouds in the sky. And this is her backing. And then this is, and you're gonna hear my kids, I'm so sorry. This is Armchair Quarterback by Brenda Riddle. And this one is gigantic. And this would be really fun to do with half square triangles. Um, sorry, with half square triangle paper to save time. Super cute. And I'm gonna look and see what size paper you would need. And this backing is, it is a uh, paint by color. That is an older collection by Moda. So let me look at this one and see what kind, because I know y'all are gonna wanna know what size triangle paper you would need and you would need two inch finished triangle paper. And it would whip up pretty quick with the triangle paper. The next one is Hopscotch by Ann Sutton. And it's a table runner and, she's, and you can see that she's got the red work and the red work, the way she did all her little um, red work, they all go different directions, if that makes sense. And I wanna show you her label that she did. This is her label and this is how Anne does labels. So she um, designs this and prints it on printable paper and then she puts fabric around it, folds it under and hand stitches it. So that's a great way to do a label. The next quilt is by Kansas Troubles Quilter, Lynn Hagmeyer, and this one is called Game, Set, Match. And so I think this is kind of meant for maybe chess or a little game, super fun. 
and I like that it's small. And then this quilt is by Brigitte, Brigitte Heitland, but Zen Chic. It's called Individual Medley, and it's super fun, and it uses her spotted fabrics. And this is her back, and this is from Modern Backgrounds. The backing is, I think. Again, this book is 20% off if you use the coupon code, and you can, of course, find the coupon code in the description box. This is a pillow. It's called Home Run Pillow. It's, the applique is beautiful. And then on the back, she did an envelope back where she just, you know, folded it under a quarter of an inch twice, put a little nice hem on it, and that's her pillow. And then Janet Claire, this is a really cute bag, and she's got some leather handles. It's called Game Ready Bag. And I'll show you both sides. This would be a great weekend project. And it's got pockets. Super cute. So this book is really versatile. Um, even though it seems like it's sporty, it's really not. This one is Swish by Susan Aki. And this is my favorite one. This is all low volumes with um, just a touch of color in between. I think it's very original and I haven't seen something like it in a while. It's like little hourglass blocks in the rows in between the rectangles to give it that look. So that is super fun and this would be a great book to get and use during your quarantine time. Very easy. I will tell you how many pages it is. It is 80 pages and it's got really beautiful photography. So really nice diagrams on how to sew everything. And so we've got that for you. And then I decided to come up with a couple of other things just to kind of fill your time during this quarantine. But first I want to show you Artful Sew Down. So we started with Artful Sew Down was a way that you would either get a spool or a cone at the beginning of the year and see how much you sewed. And I have sewn a ton, like I have sewn like three quilts. Um, and I still have a ton of, so I don't feel like I did very much, but I did. So um, we are gonna have some winners from that. So um, definitely check that out. And I wanted to let you know this week, I sewed, um, I, Bonnie and Camille have a brand new book coming out. More details will be available in May. And I've been sewing that quilt and it's so awesome. You're gonna look forward to it. So we'll take a little break and I will come back with all the fun stuff. So I came up with a couple of things that are free and online that can help you kind of get through this quarantine. So the first thing is Laundry Basket Quilts came out with the 2020 Mystery Quilt. For 15 days, she's giving you a free pattern, a block pattern, and you either make it like eight times, four times, 16 times. And this is kind of where it's at. And I am making my blocks three inches because I want it to be super hard. So I'm gonna show you all of them. And what I've done is I've used my Alpha Bitties and put a little wonder clip and that tells me which block it is. And then I'm pressing everything open. And I have had a couple of you ask for measurements to turn it into three inches. And um, I'm not gonna do that, but part of the reason I'm not gonna do it is part of these are like 0 0.31 or nine divided by 16. So if um, it's really just hard and it's not really meant for three inches, I just decided to be kind of crazy and do it. So I am quite a few days behind. She did say to not put it together yet because I guess she's gonna give you a couple of different finishing options is what I would guess. So uh, my tip is I use the Anna collection by Laundry Basket Quilts. She used the Super Bloom collection and um, as soon as she went live, we sold out of the Super Bloom. We should have more in a couple of weeks but I used the Anna and what I did is I ordered the fat quarter bundle and then I started with two yards of the background. And on these I'm starching. I use my starch technique that I got from Lisa Bonjean. You can watch my video on that. And she also put out a video last week on it too. 
So if you wanna see how she does it. So I have all of these together and I'm keeping them in my little box. And of course, this is where she's at. So this is a free sew along. And all you have to do is go to laundrybasketquilts.com, go to her blog, and I would encourage you to use fabric from your stash so you don't have to feel like you have to go out and buy something. It's a great way to use up what you already have. So that is one thing that I've been working on. Another thing is we came out with this last week. It is called Mini Wonder Quilt Pattern. It uses mini charm packs, like four mini charm packs, one and a quarter yards background, half a yard binding, and one and eighth yards backing. This is the at home collection. So this is my front and this is my piece backing. So I didn't have enough for backing. So what I did is I used leftovers from a previous project. And at the very bottom, you can see my name. And I just sewed that. It's a sweet water label that I just sewed into the backing. So this has been super fun. And then one thing that I did is I made my cornerstones all the same and had the, I, um, had some leftover yardage and that's how I was able to fussy cut those. But if you've got charm packs or mini charm packs at home, you can do this and you don't have to buy anything. It's free, it's on our Fat Quarter Shop blog. So there is that. Again, it is called Mini Wonder Quilt Pattern and completely free. And then I wanted to show you, I've shown this several times, I'm not gonna be able to show the whole thing because it's too big. It's way too big. But this is the Vintage Block Along by Lori Holt. And this is completely free on her blog. So if you're interested in something else free that uses scraps, you can do this. This is a free sew along. And I used all the Lori Holt fabrics. This is the other side. So if you're looking for something free, this is something else that's free. Free pattern on her blog. At some point, it will become not free just so you know. So there's another idea for quarantine. And then another thing I've been working on, and this is where I got my leftover fabric from. This is a brand new book, Charming Baby Quills by Melissa Corey. It is an, it's a Emma book, it is brand new. And we have beautiful photography, full color instructions, and we're having a sew along. So the sew along, we have this posted on our blog, the Fat Quarter Shop Jolly Jabber. It is going to start April 8th and in May 13th. You need five charm packs, five and three quarter yards backgrounds, seven eighths yard backing, seven eighths yard binding, and five and a quarter yards backing. And here is my quilt, and this is the same collection that I used for the other one. And it's really big, so you might not be able to see all of it, but I pieced this quite a while ago. It is 66 by 88. So here's the quilt. This is kind of the top and it uses a little bit from the whole book so that it's like a celebration of her book. And, she, and Melissa Corey designed this. And on the back, It has a pieced backing that is written in the instructions. So you guys have asked about piece backing for a while. So we wrote the backing to have this block and I sewed a label in to the very bottom of it. And Gina Tell quilted this for me. She just did a little cross hatch. And you can see that this fabric, I had some leftover and that's where I pulled my fabric from for the cornerstones in my other quilt, just saving all of the fabrics and reusing them. So we hope that these are great ways for you to use in your quarantine time. So for the end of this week's video, we got some questions from you guys on social media. So I'm gonna answer some of them. Linda asked, um, she was talking about 
Alex Anderson making blogs bigger and she wants to know how it's done. And so um, I get a lot of times I get questions on how do you make it bigger or how do you make it large, smaller? And I think that's something that really comes with time. It's not an exact, it's not easy to teach. Um, but what I would suggest is I usually put the original written instructions on the left and then on the right, I would kind of calculate. Um, and so it kind of comes with experience. Deidre says, when will the new pattern series for Sew Sampler be announced? So in your April box, you will get your first, um, your first peek at that. I think you will like it. Sharon is making a quilt for her granddaughter and she wants to use cuddle for the backing and she wants to know how she should quilt it. So I would say um, on Cuddle, it would be kind of a little bit more difficult to use on your home sewing machine. So I would probably have a long arm quilter do it. Um, and then you would just do your quilting a little bit larger so that it doesn't um, crinkle up. Peggy is asking, oh, her little pug Willow died. She ate something she shouldn't have. Do you think only a pug could help you get over losing a pug? I think a new pug would be great. And if you're in Austin, um, there is a pug rescue here. And so if I get another pug ever, I'm going to get mine from the pug rescue. And I'm so sorry about your pug. That's so sad. Latanya says she's new and her half square triangles come out pinched in one corner. And do you know why? So I think that's because when you're doing half square triangles, you are stitching on the bias. And so what I would recommend is maybe setting your seams before you press. Um, that might help or using triangle paper might help. And um, what is the, Janet asked, what is the name of the app you use to keep track of your stitching time? So I use both of these journals. One is a cross stitch journal and one is a quilting journal. And this is kind of how I use mine. And I just kind of keep track of things. Um, I do have an app on my phone. It's just called Time Tracker that kind of times everything. And when I'm doing quilts, I don't necessarily track my time because when, um, when I'm quilting, I do a lot. I start and stop a lot and do emails and kind of do it in between things. Whereas cross stitch, I'm more stationary and in one spot. But I kind of keep track of what I use. Um, so these are the two things that I use and it's good so that if I forget something, I can go back and look. And if I do something funny, I can make notes on that. Mary Ann says, I don't keep a stash of fabric and I'm somewhat regretting it. And um, what type of order are easier for you guys? Pre-cut yardage quilt kits. So pre-cuts are the easiest orders for us to fill. Um, we are, of course, on a skeleton crew. Orders will not be shipping as fast as um, we are accustomed to, but um, that's out of our control. Uh, she says, what projects do you take home with you for this quarantine and cross-stitch and quilting? And so for quilting, um, I am working on the Bonnie and Camille quilt that I was talking about. I can't show it to you yet. I have all of the blocks done and I've just got to assemble it. I am working on what I just showed, which was the laundry basket quilt mystery quilt. I'm hoping to be able to do that. Um, and I should have a lot left over to be able to do a piece backing. So that is what I'm working on for quilting. For cross stitch, Lori Holt has a brand new series coming out. And so I'm kind of working on that. Um, it's secret, so I can't really show that to you. But then everything else I can show you, like Prim Village and cross stitch or... Um, Priscilla and Pete. So I'm showing as much as I can. Um, I did have a little accident in my sewing room where a big shelf dropped and it was quite the catastrophe. So Kevin got that hung back up. Um, my wall is quite ruined from it, but that's okay. We will, we will just ignore that it fell down. Um, let's see. Janet says, I look forward to watching you because you are so positive. Since you're filming at home, does that mean we can finally get a glimpse of Kevin? So Kevin's actually at work right now. I'm filming this. Um, but my videos for next week, um, he's probably going to have to film. So I could maybe get him to sh show his face. I don't know. He's very shy. Uh, Fairy says, you do a great job in selecting fabrics. Could you give us some guidance and how you decide where to place colors? 
So um, I really learned a lot of color placement from Lori Holt. And when I started quilting like 20 years ago, what I would do is I would do this like safe zone. So I would just buy a collection and then I always knew that it would match because it's within a collection. So that's one thing that you can do is do a collection based, um, just start with the collection. Um, when you're working on a blog, try to do different scales. So you would try to do like maybe a flower, maybe a dot, maybe a stripe. Um, or if you're doing all dots, try to do different scale of dots, different colors. So just, um, and you can maybe like cut stuff out, put it on a design board and then see if you like it. Um, and then as I've progressed, I kind of just use fabrics that I like um, and just, if you like it in the end, you're gonna like it. So um, it just, I think it kind of comes with time. Gabriella said she followed along with the Ultimate Beginners Quilt and learned so much and she wants to know if we have plans for part two. So that might be something for 2021 or 2022. That was quite the undertaking. Um, so we will see about that. Um, Smitten Kitten says, Piggy, I'd also love to see a DITL. So I'm not sure what DITL is. Are you guys homeschooling or are you getting more or less quilting time? Um, so we are homeschooling, but the way that we are homeschooling is not really homeschooling. So um, we're kind of each kid has to do it at their own time. So Emma has her own laptop. And so she does hers and then she helps Christopher because Christopher not, doesn't really like messing with computers. So she kind of helps him. And then Will does his computer, he does his work on Kevin's computer and then Peyton does his either on an iPad or there's another laptop that we have. So they kind of do it at their own pace and then each of the teachers have like times that you can talk to them. So if they have questions like yesterday, Peyton had a question on what a word meant and he just wanted to see his teacher because I could have told him what it was. Um, but he just wanted to like see his teacher and say hi to his teacher. So he, um, that's kind of how we're doing it. It is, um, I would say I have more time, but I'm super frustrated. Um, it's just been super stressful to film these because I have to get the kids to be quiet. I'm trying to get them to eat breakfast, to like do their schoolwork. It's just a lot of things. And being home is really hard to be able to do everything that I need to do. Um, so it has been, I would say, stressful and difficult. Um, and then it, she says, do you have any meal ideas? So Emma's been cooking every meal. I'm not kidding. So full out, like spaghetti, tacos, fajitas, full meal, everything. Um, so that's been nice. Um, she likes to get the recipes from online. And then she says, how's Lily? So I've been seeing Lily in like two weeks. She's working from home, but I think she's good. Um, we're gonna send, I'm going to send her this video and we'll see. Um, so Lily can say hi. Um, Brenda says, we aren't going anywhere. Are you adding more fabrics to Jolly Bars? So with Jolly Bars, um, to do anything custom like that with the manufacturer, you have to have a really large minimum. So you have to order like a lot. And so we usually just do two or three per Moda collection. And we just try to do the groups that we know we can sell through that many. So that's why we don't have a lot because we can't meet the minimums. Um, how was your vacation to Grapevine? Did you go? Did you stay the entire time? So we went, um, we went probably, I think we came home a day or two early. Um, we couldn't really do anything, but it was still time to get out of the house. So we did go. Um, it was, it was okay. The hotel was completely dead, so we weren't around anybody. So it was kind of nice. Julie says she's working on the mini wonder quilt that I just showed and she's having trouble with the flying geese. Is there a way to make them slightly larger and trim them down? So sometimes when I'm doing flying geese, I would use the Eleanor Burns ruler and that's very helpful, but it wouldn't work in this since you're using mini charm packs. So I would say when you're doing mini charm packs, just make sure you draw on the line and then maybe pin your squares to your rectangle before you stitch because you're stitching on the bias and um, that might help you. Um, Karen wants to know what's a good way to store a variety of rulers. And so um, I am going to film a video for next week that just shows my whole sewing studio, how I store everything. So if you tune in next Friday, you will see how I store my rulers. And then Di is asking why fabric lines are only printed once. Um, and she says, she knows designers release new lines every year, but I often see something I like each year.
but I often don't get it. So that's just a decision of the manufacturers. Um, they have to meet minimums. And so if you wanna reprint like a SKU, you can't just reprint 90 yards because five stores need it. You have to print thousands of yards. And so it's just a financial decision and that's why um, that is not done. And I just wanna say a big thank you. I know this video might not be the best quality. Um, it's taken on a phone and um, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm happy that you watched and I'll have another video for you next week and I will get in the chat and answer any questions you have and I hope all of you guys are doing good.